the ends of the earth for your possession. Again, nothing has changed. Each and every one in this room needs to actually say that over themselves, that nothing has changed. Amen? So I titled today's message, Nothing Happens Without well, I titled it, but God is looking at our hearts response. But the truth of it is that nothing happens without the permission of God. Amen. Nothing happens without the permission of God. You know, we've got, we've got people that are all over the place. Some are ecstatic and some are so happy, you know, and some are, some are so depressed that they don't know what hit them and they're clearly have lost their peace. And then you've got those that are where they should be Amen. steadfast stable, unwavering, Amen. unshaken, Amen. because the Lord is on the throne Amen. and that doesn't change, Amen. doesn't change at all. But nevertheless, there are plenty questions that are roaming around, uh, uh, plenty of things. And so I thought I'd talk today about this topic. I thought we would shed some light here today. I thank you, Father, for your word, which is truth, and your spirit of the living God that gives us the ability to deliver that word in spirit and in truth. We decree that every ear at the sound of my voice is going to hear the spirit of the living God. Amen. And Lord, we bind up every place where they would try, the enemy would try to cause them to be blind or deaf or confused or unable to focus. We command that to go right now in Jesus name for in such a time as this, God, you have raised us up and put us here on earth for such a time as this. You make no mistakes. There are absolutely zero mistakes in the kingdom of God. So Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in Jesus mighty name. Number one I want to tell you God is sovereign yes. no matter what God is sovereign which means he is the supreme authority and all things are under his control or his domain Amen. okay the sovereignty of God we need to know our hope is not based on a man or a situation but purely and solely on God now with this said that he is the supreme authority yes. Do I believe, do I personally believe that the outcome of the presidential election was the will of God? No, no. I do not. But do I believe, do I believe that it was a fair election? No. 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 Do I believe that it was a thievery? Absolutely. Yes. It wasn't straight. It wasn't forthright. It wasn't honest. It, but it's okay because why? God is still sovereign and he is still on the throne. But you know, you've got to understand something. There is a difference between the perfect will of God and the permissible will of God. There's a difference. God is in charge. I don't even like to say God is in control because we're not robots. We have free will. If God was truly in control by the sense of the word, then we really wouldn't have a whole lot to say or do about it because we would be like robots doing exactly what he wanted us to do. And that's not a relationship of love, but God is in charge. He is in charge. He is still sovereign, but there is the, there is the perfect will of God. And then there's the permissible will of God. And as a body of believers, we need to understand the difference and we need to be able to discern what we are encountering, what we see, what's happening, right? Let's look back at Adam and Eve in the garden. It was God's desire and it would have been the perfect will of God for Adam and Eve to enjoy the continual fellowship, unhindered fellowship in the garden. That was God's will. Amen. But because of free will and because there was an agent of Satan that came in and deceived, there were actions that were taken, choices that were made that caused the perfect will of God to actually switch over to the permissible will of God. Are we all following? Yes. 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 It's important that we understand this because you need to know that in spite of it all, where are you? Because God is looking at your heart. God is always looking at the response of our hearts. Amen. Amen. So free will means choices, right? There, there's something else that the Lord has been telling me for weeks now, weeks now. And, and it's this, I keep hearing it in my spirit. The people wanted a king and they continued to complain. 
and they continued to persist, and they continued to say, we want a king, we want a king, we want to be like everyone else. We want a king, we want a king. The prophet said, you don't want a king. The king is going to take your firstborn. The king is going to take your firstborn and also your first of everything, your provision, your livestock. You don't want a king. Trust me, you don't want to be like everyone else. God has a plan and it's a perfect plan. No, we want a king. And God said, fine, let him have the king. Let him have the king, right? Sometimes God gives you the desires of your heart, but he sends leanness to our souls. Yeah. How many of you know that that is the word of God? Oh, yes. It is the scripture. He sends leanness to the soul, right? I can, I can with confidence say in this church, we have been praying and we've been standing for what we believe would have been God's choice for the election. And I think most of, I would say 99% of us are all on the same page with that choice. We prayed. We fasted, we believed, we sought God's heart, and we were faithful at that. Praise God. We did our part. I believe God is pleased with the churches that did their part. But you can't disregard or underestimate the fact that the division that has been in the church, the body of Christ at large, was so strong. And aside from the division, all of the Witches, warlocks, casting spells, bringing in all these incantations and all forms of wickedness in high places. Don't even think for one minute that it was not such a well-laced plan that had the church been united, the story could have ended differently. But the church was not united, it was divided. And the church was divided because uh, there is too much sloppy agape being taught from the pulpit. There is too, it's a lukewarm gospel. And when was the last time you heard that he sent leanness to their souls? So maybe you haven't. I think you have in this church. But I think that at large, that's not really spoken of too much. Or there, there's so much on the other side, it's, it's condemnation. How about preaching the whole gospel, right? So I believe that we have a church that has been very, very divided. And so when a house that's divided, we know it can't stand, right? But God, we are never hopeless. We are never without hope. But I'm trying to lay out right now, I'm trying to lay out uh, where we are at in our culture and what's hap- and what has just happened with the inauguration. So what I believe is happening is what I have believed has been happening since the beginning when Mar- in March when God told me, wickedness in high places. This is all in an attempt to cause him to not be reelected. Let me just tell you, we know he wasn't a perfect man because no one is. But we look at the values of what they profess to believe. Amen. Right? So here's, here's what I've seen this week. I'm sure you've seen it too. I have seen the church believers pastors okay congratulating worship clapping so to speak um admonishing this wonderful promotion and breakthrough praise god this is this, have you none of you okay i have some of you have yeah where it's they're, they're elevating the fact that we now have a female vice president. And how wonderful. It's the ceiling has just been removed. It's, there's no limits now because we have a female as a vice president. And I'm just going, you've got to be kidding me right now. When did it change from values and what somebody believes versus their sex? Who cares if they're male or female? What do they believe in? What is their position? So to us as the church, don't, I'm not, I have, I've unfriended so many people. I can't even tell you. (laughs) And I know they've unfriended me too. And I don't care. I don't care because honestly, I am not here to tickle anybody's ears. Not even yours. I am not here. I have a mandate and we all do. We all do. But as someone that is called to teach the word of God from the pulpit, guess what? I'm held to a higher standard. What I say really matters. If I say something and lead you astray, God's going to hold me accountable and I'm not going to have your blood on my hands. 
It's really important. So in the days that we live in, we, we see, we've always, we have seen this where it was going, you know, muddy down, just kind of muddy up the waters, just bring in the mixture, um, you know, cause people to be afraid of wearing Jesus loves you t-shirts or saying such a thing, trying to censor everything and trying to keep your voice muted if possible. We know where it's going, but I'm telling you right now, not going to happen not here and I pray that you're also listening and getting that fire of God that we just prayed for and believed we received so that you're going to stand even on your own even when we're not all together because we need the body of Christ to be tenacious for Christ we really do we re need you know we've had we love the presence of God and we're going to continue to flow in that because it's a gift from God to us and why shouldn't we right? But at the same time, we also, it's my responsibility to make sure that you're strengthened in the truth, that when you leave, you actually have something to hang on to. And it's the word that you're going to go and go, you know what? My strength is in Christ, Christ alone. He has not changed. And I'm going to make sure that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God into salvation. So you, you know, the days that we live in, like the book of Acts, where they were threatened for even speaking the name of Jesus. But what did they say? I can't help but speak that name. I'm sorry. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to bow. Right? We can't bow. You cannot bow down to a demon. These are demon spirits. We don't battle flesh and blood. We battle against powers and principalities. So we must know the difference and we have to be able to not in fear and not in anger what you see is a righteous anger church we got to grow up people go oh well she's she's angry it's a righteous anger and you should have it too Amen. you should you should know when it's you know my goodness when they come against your Lord that has given his whole life for you, there should be something that rises up within you. There should be something that says, oh, no, you don't. I am not going to back down, and I'm not going to cave into fear yes. or compromise or be put into a mold that they are clearly trying to make. Yeah. So what if there's a cost? Well, of course there's going to be a cost. When did you think there was never going to be a cost in your walk? That's the wrong preaching gospel. Let me tell you, if that's what you were listening to, then it was the wrong gospel. Welcome to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus also per was persecuted and he died. And he said, Lord, if this cup could be taken from me, but nevertheless, we don't get to dictate how things go, but we get to trust God. But don't forget, we get to trust God. But we also have authority and we bind and we loose and we're supposed to do that. So a house divided can't stand. This is what I feel. The remnant of God, which is what we have right now, but I believe the circles are going to become smaller. I, I think that it's going to be very evident um, as for who really has uh, the whole gospel, the pure gospel, the simple gospel, but the very complex gospel because it's, there's, there's a depth to it right? Who, who really is walking with the true gospel of Christ and who is not? And so what are we to do? We're to make sure, number one, our hearts remain pure and right before God. We are to make sure that we continue to move forward because God is always looking at our hearts. And so we, are, we must make sure that we actually walk in the strength of God, that God takes any blinders that might be there, he removes them. Because I'll tell you, you know, like I started that scripture, in darkness, you're gonna start, your, your light is gonna just arise. It's arising, it's actually getting brighter. It should be, it should be, right? So, so we know that the word says in Matthew 7, 14, that narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few find it. That's narrow. Narrow is the road that leads to life. And so we're here and we're just passing through, guys. We're, this is, we're just passing through this, this life. This is not our home. Never was our home. We're pilgrims. We're sojourners, right? We're passing through. And, and the word also goes on and it says, broad is the way that leads to destruction and many enter through it. Our job is to pray. Our job is to see what we see and to pray to have the love of God within us so strongly that we see our brothers and sisters in Christ being deceived, not till you judge them and go, oh, I can't believe that. No, pray, pray for them that the scales would fall off their eyes. That's our job. So I, I believe that, you know, God has saying, you know, you wanted a king, here's your king. Here's the answer to some of your prayer. Yeah. 
right? Some of you, some of the people, right? How about the rest of the people that, that they never prayed for that. They were praying the exact opposite. Guess what? You get to be the soldier. Now we're gonna see where your, test, your faith really is. Your faith will be tested. But the word says, even in that, when our faith is tested, will you allow God's strength to rise up through you? And are you gonna count it all joy? Because you know what? Your faith is growing, but so is your maturity. As you press in to the difficult times. Let, let's turn there. Let's go to James. Can, can we go to James um, chapter one? I know I didn't give you that scripture. Because the Bible tells us in James chapter one that we are to count it all joy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So when we count it all joy, um, when, when you fall into various trials, and, and, and let, let's get to the next one. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Amen. We got to take the word to heart. But let patience have its perfect work. There's a perfect work, like there's the perfect will of God. There is a perfect work, and then there is not so perfect, but you're getting there. Praise God for God's grace and mercy. But we're striving towards the perfect work, right? So let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfected and complete, not lacking anything. See, the reason that we can, can preach that God is a God that wants to prosper us, we just read it. But here's the... Here's the problem. Okay, here's the problem. If we can go back to the others, the one before, yeah. People like to go right to the lacking nothing part of the scripture there. Ah, yeah. oh, see, we serve a God that wants to prosper us, and yeah, and praise God, and he really, really does. But they forget the road to get there is letting patience have its perfect work. It, it's letting that perfect, hit, that we may be perfected. If we've got to be perfected, that means some things have to leave. Something has, some things have to change. Murmuring and, and grumbling have to stop. Having a divisiveness in our, in our spirit has to stop. Comparing walking in jealousy has to stop. Yeah. Not reading the Bible, not reading your word on a daily basis has to stop. You actually need to start. Get your face in the word and let the word get in you. How do we just go to, oh, we're going to lack nothing? when you haven't let patience work its perfect work in you so that we become complete. So they're wanting a king, they're wanting a king, they're wanting a king. God gives them what they wanted, but we know in another place it says he sent leanness to their soul. But let me tell you, that's not gonna be you because here's where you stand. Here's where I believe that God has you. I believe God has you as alert, as a church, alert, have been, as to what's happened and what's been happening, right? Um, on fire and asking God for more. Willing to be separate, come out from amongst them, be separate. Willing to be consecrated even more to God, right? I, I believe that this is the heart, the expression of God for this church. Yes. Consecrated to God. Willing to stand even when it's difficult. That's yes. what God is expecting. Yes. Because though they asked for a king, and though all those things did happen to them, you know, there were always, always, there's always been God's remnant. Those that saw it never wanted that, but actually, yes, of course you receive part of that package. But let me tell you, what you really receive is the strength of God that says, even in this, Lord, I will yet praise you. Even in this, I will yet serve you no matter what because my dependency is not on a man but on a king and that king never left his throne that king is eternal right that king is Jesus Christ so if it does cost of course it's going to cost you we've let we've had it too comfortable for too long right and so but but for many depending on how you were saved and what you were taught from the very beginning I believe some were taught I don't know all of you and I didn't know all of you from when you first received the Lord but I'll tell you what for me it was not for me it was obey it was listen it was change it was repent that's why that's so ingrained in me you want to live holy good you should die Die, die to self and let Christ raise, be risen in you. Amen. And see from that position, we are now the salt that actually is worth its salt and the light that actually shines bright. And from that place, God says, I have found a vessel that I can pour my spirit in that I actually can trust with more. 
God wants to trust us with more. And like I've told you, as times get darker, will you be that sold out vessel that says, I'm gonna carry the light in a dark world? Because if at any time people need Jesus, it's now. That's it is right. now. If any time the church needs Jesus, yeah. it's now. Yeah. See, sometimes we think, oh, the world needs Jesus, and they do. But so does the church, guys. So does the church. That's right. Like the true life where it's consecrated unto the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's so important. So... There's another thing that I want to talk about. First of all, you know, this question has come to me. Well, you know, we were all praying and believing, you know. Yes, we can all pray and believe and then trust God. Amen. Amen. But here's the thing. You know what? God knows the tomorrows, right? And so we also know that there is an op- there's a chance that he's also going to rise up and, re- and run again in four, in four years. Praise God. We pray he does. But even if he doesn't, guys... You cannot have that as your hope because now you're hoping in a man and not in God Almighty. You can have your personal ask, like, Lord, I would love for the. That's what we've been doing the whole time. Having faith for what we believe would be the best choice, not perfect, right? So you can have that. And and we believe that. I still believe, like, Lord, I thank you and we're believing for that. But ultimately, we believe in you and not man. Because no man's going to fill and fulfill what God is is doing. But here's something I want to talk to you about. And this is definitely, um, as for my church, I am called by God to make sure we're all on the same page, right? That we're all being walking towards holiness and not anything else. How many of you have heard this phrase? President uh, Biden is not my president. Okay, some of you may have heard that. Well, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because of this. He was not the one that we were voting for, praying for, believing, and asking God for. That's true. He's not our choice. That's true. Or at least for most of us in this room, that is. Um, But nevertheless, he is the one that is in that office. And nevertheless, we are called to pray for the one that is in that office. You don't have to like the person, but we are still called to love. No matter what, we are called and mandated by God to love. Well, what does that mean? That means that we are to do this. We are to pray for his salvation. We are to pray that he doesn't even get to sleep until he makes his life right with God. Come on, church. Stop being like, well, I'm called to love. Oh, I'm called to love. I'm called to pray. So therefore, oh, God bless him. Lord, God bless him. Protect him. Amen. Stop it. Knock it off. Wake up. Come on. You have have weapons of warfare. What does this man really need? Come on. Professing Catholic that is okay with abortions up to late term. What does this man really need? Denying, yeah, denying a man and a woman as God's ordained, uh, you know, marriage to anything goes. LGBTQ plus. Really? Come on. So ungodly. What does this man need? An awakening from the Lord. He needs the love of God. He needs to be saved. He needs to come down to his knees and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. This is how we're to be praying for him. Lord, a wake up call. Wake him up. Wake them up. Those that are in his administration, wake them up, God, because they're going down a completely wrong road. Come on, you guys know who he had. I didn't even watch it. I didn't even watch the inauguration because you know what? I wasn't going to subject myself to that. But I did hear that he had Lady Gaga sing the national anthem. Are you kidding? High priestess, witchcraft, Satanist, worshiper. I don't care if you don't like what I said. It is what I believe. Wrong. My gosh, it's terrible. But nevertheless, I'm going to read to you Romans 13 because we are called to do this. Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. Amen. Amen. We want a king. We want a king. We want a king. We want a king. Okay. It's not my perfect will, but okay. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority, listen to this, resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment upon themselves. 
bringing judgment upon themselves when we resist. You don't have to like who's in the White House, but you're still called to pray. And to say he's not my president is rebellion because he is the president. It's our job to pray. It's our job to remember who's still on the throne. It's our job not to, uh, not to compromise our values, our beliefs, but it's our job to make sure that we stand firm as the body of Christ. You know, unfortunately, the world sees the church as weak, and it's because a lot of them are. But I'll tell you, you learn how to fight using the word of God. You learn how to cast out demons. You learn that actually the ecclesia of God is within you. And there's an authority that's within you that actually causes you to rise up above all of that and actually decree a thing and, oh, yes, it shall come to pass. In your personal life, it shall come to pass. In those that have given you permission, it shall come to pass. Some of you might say, hey, wait, 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 wait. We decreed a thing and it didn't come to pass. In your personal life, it shall come to pass. In those that have given you permission, it shall come to pass. Remember, we're in a battle. Some people have said, nope, I refuse. I don't want it. I, don't, I refuse. God's not going to knock that wall down because of his, because of what? Because of free will, choice. So am I making sense right now? We, we have to really. So, so here's what I was thinking. I was thinking of Joseph. Joseph had a dream when he was 17 years old. And he believed that this dream was going to come to pass. But it took a long time for that dream to come to pass, right? And as a matter of fact, when he had that dream at 17 years old and he shared it with his family, what did his family do? They mocked, they ridiculed, they laughed. And then what happened? Then there was consequences because of having the dream, because of the jealousy, because of all the favoritism and such. So then he was what? Taken, taken away, taken away, removed from that place where it was his family, safety, security, God ordained. This is your family. But yet because of, because of rebellion, because of jealousy, taken out, sold as a slave. But you know what? Joseph was a man like you and I are people, right? And I'm sure there were times he was up and down, but I'll tell you what, he continued to seek the face of God and God honored him. God blessed him. God raised him up. And that day came to pass when the dreams that he had actually came to fruition. But you know what? The glory was not now. Oh, the dream came to fruition. The vision came to pass. No, the glory was in the fact that many souls actually turned to God at that point. There was not a, oh, see, I told you so in his part. There was not, no, there was tears, tears of pain, tears of brokenness, tears of years gone by, tears of growth, tears of maturity, tears of what he learned along the path as he was in the pit, in the prison, you know, and then in the palace. But that was still not his home. Learning, you know, new language, learning a new custom. But still remembering where he came from. He was 17 years old, guys. He wasn't a three-year-old baby. He was 17. We're talking about total reprogramming. But yet he still never forgot who God was, right? And in that long stretch of time, God was, he honored the dream that he had and the gifting. And, he, and they came to pass. Mm -hmm.